Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Shauna Verstegen. Today, we're doing a 30-minute rip training workout. You're going to see some of your familiar favorites. You're also going to see some new stuff, and you're going to see a cool twist on some of those familiar favorites. We have a warm-up and then four rounds of work. Each round of work has three different progressions that we're going to alternate between sides. So the nice thing, if the progression gets outside of your comfort zone, you can choose one of those first two progressions as we move through that round of work. So let's get started with our warm-up. First of all, I'm going to have you unattach your rip trainer and take that bottom carabiner and just put it through the other eye bolt. Okay? We are going to start hinging with your rip trainer. So I'm going to have you place your rip trainer on your back so that it's touching the back of your head, behind your shoulder blades, and okay, right between the butt cheeks, <laughs> your sacrum. Soft knee bend. We're going to hinge forward. Make sure all three of those points maintain contact. We're using the rip trainer for tactile feedback to make sure that you're keeping your ears, your shoulders, your hips, and your ankles in alignment. If you notice that you hinge forward, and for example, it stops touching your sacrum, that means you're probably rounding your back. Or if your head loses contact, that means you're kind of chicken pecking with your neck. So keeping that posture, feeling that stretch, and your shoulder blades warming up the hips. Three, two, and one, same thing, but now we're going to squat. Feet a little wider than shoulder width apart, press the feet apart, drop it down, and drive it up. Same thing, when you get to the bottom of your squat, you should still have contact with that sacrum to the bar. If you're a tail tucker, then you may have lost that contact. Now you'll notice I've got a little bit of tightness in my hips, so I'm hinging forward a little more than I probably should. We wanna see that bar being parallel to your shins. But again, we're using that bar for tactile feedback. And maybe you're realizing that you don't have that neutral spine as you squat. So minimize that range of motion and keep practicing this as part of your regular warm up sequence. Three, two, and one. Good. We're going to connect your rip trainer and do your step back lunge with an overhand reach. So palms are down in mid zones, cord is on the right side of my body arms straight out in front of me in that rip drive position. I'm going to step back with my left leg, reach the arms overhead, get a nice stretch, brace the core, come right back and reset on top. Same thing, step back with the left leg. Nice stretch, tucking my tail under and step together. So we're stretching out that anterior chain, forcing that plank and beginning to play with resisting rotation. If this is too much on your shoulders, you do not have to go all the way overhead. <sighs> One more on each side, step, stretching through your hip flexors, return. Other side, stretch, feel that hip flexor stretch, and return. Turn that bar around. Whew, I'm already out of breath. <laughs> this is gonna be a tough one, guys. Here we go. Step back one leg, feel that stretch, and press it down and return. Remember, if it's too much, you can always walk back a little bit. Plant the foot. You're doing your best to keep that bar perpendicular to the wall next to you, parallel with the floor. Your hands are in an even alignment. Five, four, three, two, and one. Finally, rip rotation on each side. Have you stand sideways to the anchor? I've got my right shoulder facing the anchor, palms down, mid zones. Extend your arms. Pivoting off your back foot, you're going to rotate and return. We're just practicing holding that nice, straight, cylindrical plank, shoulders down and back out of your ears, pivoting with that back heel. I'm squashing my bug, driving through my hips, slightly bracing my core. Three. Two and one, other side, turn it around. Now my left shoulder's lined up with the anchor. Roll those shoulders out, arms extended. Pick up my left heel, pivot and return. You'll notice your back glute engage a little bit too as you activate that pivot. Whew. Whew. 15 seconds left. This is only the warm up, friends. Before each round, we're gonna spend about 90 seconds going over all of the exercises. Sorry, give me five. Started talking, four, three, two, and one. Then we'll hit them. All right, so we're actually gonna begin with a row series. We are going to paddle a paddleboard. We're gonna paddle a kayak, 
And then we're going to paddle a canoe with a fun little twist. So for our rip paddle board row, you'll be standing facing your anchor. Okay, so I'm going to grab my other rip trainer. Your base hand is going to be my left hand, is palm up at the end of the bar. Power hand, palm down. I am zones one and zones four. Remember to make it harder, you can slide up to zone three. Paddle board row, I dip my oar in the water, stand up to point toward the anchor. Second exercise will be a kayak row. So I dip my oar in the anchor. Notice I'm pulling with my right, pushing with the left, but now keeping the end of the bar as far away from me, I come all the way up and around. Finally, we're going to do a canoe row with a rotational chop. What? So for the canoe, we're going to change our grip, turn my left hand palm down. Okay, kind of like you're holding that canoe paddle. I'm going to dip my canoe oar in the water, and then I'm going to stand up, pull my left hand toward my chest, and chop at a diagonal. You probably wouldn't do that while you actually row a canoe, <laughs> but we got a lot of push-pull action here, keeping tension on that cord. All right, guys. <laughs> So we're going to do one side, then the other side of one movement, one side, the other side of the other, and then of the third. Remember, you can always check it back to that first movement we did. Let's get in a position for your rip paddleboard row. Okay, I'm going to have your left hand palm up, zone one, right hand palm down, zone four or higher if you want more challenge. Standing facing the anchor point, let's start that paddleboard row. I'm pulling my right hand down, dip the oar in the water just past my right heel. Notice how I'm not folding the front side of the bar in front of me. I'm still dabbing down with my left hand, but I'm not flipping the bar over. Okay. And if you want to add a little speed and power to this, you can. Just know there's a lot more of that to come. <laughs> but I'm pulling with my right, pushing with my left. Five, four, three, two, and one. 15 seconds to transition to the other side. So now my right hand is palm up. It's my base hand. Left hand is palm down. It's the power hand. Stand facing the anchor. Let's get your oar in the water. Remember, the further back you are, the harder this is. And stand up, point toward the anchor, pull with the left, push with the right. Notice how I'm hinging with my hips. And again, I'm not folding that bar forward. I'm keeping my oar in the water. Now, when my husband and I go paddleboarding, one of us gets in the lead, and we try to splash each other. So you add a little bit of power in there, like you're splashing the water behind you. We're not competitive at all, I swear. And five, four, three, two, and one, moving on to your kayak row, same thing, but now that oar is gonna come up and around. So left hand palm up, zone one, right hand palm down, zone four. Standing facing the anchor, if you're up for a bigger challenge, you can walk it back. If you need it easier, walk it forward. Here we go, everybody, 30 seconds. Dip it down, wrap it up and around. You feel that core engagement, holy heck, and stab it down. End of the bar goes as far away from your body as you can. Stab it down, up and around. My hips are still forward. My shoulders and chest are forward. But you notice how when you bring the power end of that rip trainer further away from your body, it makes it really challenging. I'm really resisting rotation here. Five, four, three, two, and one. Oh, we have to do the other side. So now your right hand is your base hand. Left hand is your power hand. Stand in facing the anchor. You get a brief moment to catch your breath. And then we're going to dip that oar in the water again in three, two, and one. Kayak row. Dip it down. Up and around, away from your body. Chest is up, dip it down, hip in the hinge, or hinge in the hips, hip in the hinges. <laughs> oh my goodness. So some of you might be parents, you'll know that with the birth of each child, you lose about half of your brain cells, so I'm down to like four brain cells. I'm impressed I can even get a full sentence out anymore. Five, uh, four, three, Two and one. <laughs> All right, canoe row with a rotational chop for you rip regulars. This is gonna be a goofy one. Okay, palms are down. Right hand is power hand, zone four. Left hand, power hand, or base hand, zone one. Standing facing. Dip that canoe paddle in the water. Now pivot your right foot, push and chop. Dip it in, and so I'm pushing down with my left hand. Now I'm pulling with my left hand. So I kind of switch my push-pull action here. Push-pull, push-pull. Row and chop. Notice how I'm pivoting, I'm picking up my right heel. Dip the oar in and chop. Three, two, 
and one. Switch sides. So my right hand is my base hand, palm down zone one, left hand my power hand, palm down zone four, standing facing. Let's paddle. I normally have two people in the canoe when I go canoeing. Right now it's just me. Here we go. Dip that oar in the water, pick up the opposite heel and chop. Woo, I wasn't ready for that one. Dip it down. Can always find your strong side and your weak side. See how I stepped it in a little bit on this side? I'm picking up my left heel. I'm really pulling my right hand in as I drive that left arm up into the chop. So I'm pulling with my left arm and then I'm pushing with my left arm. I'm pushing with my right arm, then I'm pulling with my right arm. Three, two, and one. All right, guys. Let's get ready for your next round, our hockey slap shot round. All right, so rip hockey slap shot. Left hand palm down zone one, right hand palm up zone four. To make it harder, you can move that right hand to zone three. Standing sideways, I'm gonna pull my left hand to my hip. Pick up my right heel. Remember, I'm squashing that bug, pulling the left hand in, driving the right arm around. The bar is going to end about a foot in front of my outside foot. Imagine you're actually hitting that hockey puck across the rink. Second one will be with a double pivot. So instead of just starting even with your anchor and push pulling, now I'm actually going to pivot toward it, pull up, and then swing through, almost more like your golf swing. I'm not a golfer, okay? The last one, we're gonna add a shuffle. Okay, I might go out of camera for a not just for this, but it's shuffle, shuffle, slap shot, shuffle, shuffle back. Shuffle, shuffle, slap shot, shuffle, shuffle, return. That one's gonna get your heart rate up like crazy. All right, guys, let's get into position. And I'm purposely giving you this rest break. The, honestly, the weirdest one here is the double pivot where you come up and then you swing down. Make sure you're far enough away so you have enough tension for this exercise. All right, should we get going? Rip hockey slap shot. Left hand palm down, zone one. Right hand palm up, zone four. Standing sideways to your anchor point. Let's find the end range just past your left foot. Here we go. Pick it up and push, pull, strike. Push, pull, strike. I'm pulling my left hand to my left hip. Driving my right arm around. I can get a little more power to that. Get that cord to wiggle a little bit. <sighs> Picking up my right heel. Drive my hip into this. This is where the power comes from. With that pivot in that rotation in my hip. Five, four. Then we turn around. Three, two, one. Hockey slap shot on the other side. I've got wires and microphones going everywhere. Oh my gosh. All right, right hand, palm down, zone one. Left hand, palm up, zone four. Standing sideways to that anchor. Let's find the end range of motion just past your right foot. Chest is open. Pick it up and strike. Push, pull, strike. Push, pull, strike. I'm pulling the right hand to my hip, pivoting that left foot, picking my left heel up, driving that hip around. Eyes are off into the distance, looking to see where my hockey puck is gonna fly across the rink. Whew, 10 seconds left, ha, lots of power. Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, let's do that hockey slap shot with a double pivot. Okay, so now high sticking is allowed. We're gonna come up high on the backside, pivot toward it, swing down through, pivot and explode toward the bottom. Let's find our end range. Here we go, up high, push, pull, up, push, pull. Pivot toward the anchor, pop it back. Ta. Ta. So it's another push, pull action, kind of like that canoe row to the chop where at first one arm's pushing and the other's pulling. And then we switch, driving my right hip through, shoulders down and back, make sure you're maintaining that nice tight core, rotating like a cylinder. Other side. And as you get more comfortable with the movement, you can start a more speed and power. Right hand palm down, zone one, left hand, palm up zone four. Find that end range. Here we go, team. Pivot here, pop it back. Hup, and return. So notice how my right hip is rotating toward, and then my right hip, left hip loads and follows through. Again, shooting that puck across the rink. Can you tell I know as much about hockey as I do about golf? But I do know rotational mechanics. And that's what we're working on. Three, two, 
and one. All right, hockey slap shot with the shuffle. Now you're gonna get tired <laughs> if you're not already. Left hand palm down zone one, right hand palm up zone four. I'm gonna get all up into your face, you ready? And shuffle, shuffle, strike, pop. Shuffle, shuffle, return. Shuffle, shuffle, strike, ha. <laughs> See if you can get right up into your screen too, pop. But don't hit it, don't break your screen. And return, especially if you have a really nice laptop. <laughs> Shuffle, shuffle, push, pull. These are fun, they get your heart rate up. They're athletic. Five, four, three, two, and one. Turn it around. 15 seconds to switch your grip. Right hand is palm down, zone one. Left hand, palm up, zone four. We're gonna shuffle into it. Still pivoting that left hip around. Here we go, shuffle, shuffle. Push, pull, strike. Shuffle, return. Ha! Shoulders pulled back. Chest up and tall. Push, pull, strike. Right hand to your hip. Ha! 15 seconds left. Let me see that big pivot. Lots of power. Last five seconds of this round. Three, two, and one. All right. Whew, grab some water. Let's get set up for this next round here. We've got some pressing to do here. We're gonna start with your rip squat press. So your palms will be down mid zones. I'll be standing facing away from my anchor point. End range of motion, my, shoulder, my feet are shoulder width apart, or a little wider. Not directly overhead, but just above eyebrow height with the bar. If you feel it in your shoulders, go a little lower. I'm gonna have you squat down, Pull that into your collarbone, press up and stick. That's our first one. Second one is we're gonna jump press and jog it back. So I'm actually gonna jump forward, squat, press, and then shuffle it back. Squat, press, shuffle it back. The last one's the meanest one. It's the rip burpee. Remember, this is advanced, so if you're not comfortable with it, just give me one of those rip squat presses or rip jump presses. Otherwise, standing facing away mid zones, I'm gonna brace the bar on the ground. Okay, so it doesn't go anywhere. Find my plank, do the push up, pop my feet in, resist rotation, and then a rip jump press. And then brace the bar on the ground again. Ah! If you want to, you can pause and practice that a couple times so it's not getting thrown right at you when we move to that exercise. All right, guys, you ready? Rip, squat, press. So let's find that end range, palms down, mid zones. We're gonna do slightly overhead. So again, just above eyebrow height, shoulders down and back. Here we go, squat down to collarbone, stand up, press it up and stick. Squat down, press it up and stick. To make this more challenging, you walk away from your anchor. To make it easier, you walk backwards towards your anchor. Trying to keep your chest up. People tend to really hinge forward when they have that bar in their hand. So keep your chest up, just like a regular squat. But now you're resisting this rotation here and press it, shoulders are away from your ears. I'm pressing my feet apart to the floor. Go ahead, let's switch that grip around. Okay, so now my left hand is my power hand. If you start on the other side, don't worry. <laughs> Palms are down mid zones. Let's find that pressed position. We always start at the end range of motion. Shoulders checked back down and back out of your ears. Here we go, squat down collarbone. Stand up, stick it. Squat down collarbone, press those feet apart. Shoulders away from your ears. Sticking that landing on top. Body straight and strong. <sighs> nice, strong, active core. Whew. 15 seconds left, not even. Can you go a little faster? <sighs> Five, four, three, two, and one. All right, rip, jump, press. You're jumping forward and shuffling back. Let's bring that bar back around so your right hand is your power hand. Let's find the end range of motion. So you're in that press position. And then we'll shuffle it back. Rip, jump, ha. And then bring it back. Okay, rip, jump, and bring it back. Big explosion forward. Shuffle it back. Hinge, press. Remember that neutral spine we worked on during your warm up? Make sure you're maintaining that throughout these squats. 
because there was actually a hinge in your squat. What? Last one. Oh, turn it around, other side. <laughs> I think that one's crazy. Wait till we get to those burpees. All right, start end range. Going in three, two, one. Shuffle it back. Squat, big press, and shuffle it back. Pressing through your feet, driving forward, exploding. Very fun athletic move. Again, if jumping's not for you, I hope you stuck with that rip squat press. Five, four, three, two, and one. Back to burpees. Are you ready, guys? So you're going to press down to the ground. The secret is really pushing the bar down into that plank. Pop those feet under. Rip, jump, press. You ready, guys? Here we go. Bar on the ground. Push up. Pop those feet in. Rip, jump, press. Hear that noise? That's me pressing the bar into the floor. Getting my feet underneath me. And notice how I'm not bringing my feet together. I keep them wide so I can come right back up into this athletic stance. Squeezing my buns, body straight and strong for that push up. Five, four, three, two, and one. Other side. Holy wow. <laughs> 10 seconds. Catch your breath. Cords on the other side of your body, palms down, mid zones. Left hand is your power hand. Are you ready? I'm not. Here we go. Blanket down, push up, feet under, big press. Stick it, plank it, press it. Your body's straight and strong, getting those feet right underneath you, and explode upwards. Make sure you're not letting that cord pull you backwards when you do the jump. I almost check it to the right a little bit. And down. Five, four, three, two, and one. Oh. All right, guys. One more round. Grab a quick sip of water. We're gonna do some side-facing exercises. And we'll stretch it out and call it a day. So, pal off press with sumo squat. You'll be standing sideways. Right hand will be mid-zone, palm up. Left hand, mid-zone, palm down. You're gonna drop into your sumo squat and then press the bar in front and return, trying to drop that bucket as low as you can. Second one, storing the pot. Same position, but we're going to use this double bubble toil and trouble, and then unwind that. Okay, we're perturbing that active plank. Finally, we're gonna do an overhead press isometric march. Much harder than it looks. Okay, <laughs> all right, so we'll get ready for that sumo squat. You get about 30 more seconds to catch your breath from those redonkulous burpees. Again, the further out you are, the more challenging it is. The lower you hold on the bar in that flagpole position, the more challenging this is. So you can always move your hands away from that power end. Okay, and remember, the bar's out in front of you, your shoulders shouldn't follow. You should have that nice, strong, tall, athletic posture. All right, left hand, base hand, palm down, zone one, right hand, power hand, palm up, uh, mid zones, and squat it down, pal off press. Pressing out in front, and return. Shoulders are down and back. Now that bar is gonna start to turn sideways towards your anchor. Really fight to keep it perpendicular to the floor as you work in and out here. Again, shoulders are down and back. Can you go a little lower in that sumo squat? I don't know if I can, my legs are torched. Five, four, three, two, and one. Let's turn sides, woo! And again, if that wasn't enough for you, move it away from the anchor or change that grip. Move your hands away from the power side of the bar. Right hand palm down, left hand palm up, standing sideways, find it and pal off press, press it out. Now, people sometimes call this the Pavlov press. Pavlov to the dogs, the drooling dogs. So there should be no drooling during this pal off press. <laughs> Shoulders checked down and back, press your feet apart. Ugh. Nice and tall and strong. <sighs> Creating that core tension. 
Can you go lower? Five, four, three, two, and one. Come on up. Oh. All right. Now we're stirring the pot. So again, turn it around. Sideways to the anchor, same hand position, but now we're gonna make circles in front of our body. We're finding that core brace, but perturbing the plank. So I'm wrapping it around, stirring the pot. Again, I'm not dumping my shoulders forward as I stir. Nice upright posture in that sumo squat position. Now let's unwind, stir the pot the other way. <sighs> Keeping the core braced. <laughs> it's not just your core, is it? Your thighs are screaming too. A little lower for that last 10 seconds. Keep stirring. <sighs> ah. <sighs> Five, four, three, two, and one. Other side. All right. We're almost done, guys. This is our last round of work. So right hand, palm down. That's your base hand. Left hand, palm up. That's your power hand. Let's find your sumo squat position. Flag pull that bar. Here we go. Stir in the pot. As big as you can make it. We'll still maintain that upright posture. Shoulders are down and back. Chest is up tall and proud. <sighs> Unwind, please. Other direction. <sighs> Can you go a little lower? Last 10 seconds here. <sighs> Five, four, uh, three, two, and one. Okay. Overhead isometric march. So you're gonna stand sideways to the anchor. Okay, I'm gonna press this bar overhead, maintaining my body in as straight of a line as I can. And I pick up one leg at a time. If that bothers your knees, just hold that overhead position. So one foot up, and then the other. Now the bar is trying to pull me this way. I'm resisting. If you don't feel that, walk even further to the side. If you feel like you're gonna tip over, bring it back. Do you feel that left side of your body totally lighting up? to resist that side bend. And you have to work all the way through your hips. I'm focusing on actively pressing down with each foot. Other side. This is it, guys. Then we stretch, and you will have survived. Palms down, mid zones. Roll out your shoulders. Grand finale. Let's bring that bar overhead. Now the right side of your body is lighting up. Pick up one leg at a time. Let's march. Again, I'm pressing the foot into the floor, tucking my hip in. Try not to lean too much. You'll have to lean just a little bit, but I really want that contraction in the right side of your body to happen, not from gravity, but from you engaging. We've got 10 seconds left to this one. Then we'll do some stretches and call it a day. Five, four, three, two, and one. Gently set your bar down. Team, go ahead and lay on your back really quick here. Oh, we did it. And I'm gonna have you hug your right knee into your chest, left leg straight. I'm gonna move through these a bit quickly to keep you at your 30 minutes today. But if you wanna hold any of them longer, feel free. Take your right hand down to the floor, gently with your left hand, pull that knee across. We did a lot of resisting rotation today. Hopefully your back doesn't hurt. If you do have some low back pain, that means at some point during the workout, you may have been letting up a little bit and then it kind of gets into your spine. You might have not had that ideal posture the whole time, and that comes with practice. Go ahead and bring that leg up, extend it, lace your hands behind that, or just below that knee. Gently pull in, a little bit of a hamstring stretch here. The crazy thing about the rip trainer is even though we didn't directly do any lower body work, <laughs> your legs are always firing up like crazy. Go ahead and switch sides. Let's pull your left knee in. Whenever I teach my all-day rip training courses, Everyone's like, oh, it's my shoulders, my core, but not much for my legs. And then the next day, everybody's bum is sore. Left hand down on the ground, take your right hand, gently pull that knee across, looking over your left shoulder with some big inhales and exhales. Let that knee fall a little bit lower. Now straighten that left leg up, lace your hands just below the knee, pull it in. Awesome job, guys. I hope you learned some cool new things too. And roll at your back a few times. And let's sit up in a straddle, legs out, toes up. And just walk those hands forward, a little bit of a hinge. Well, congratulations, you survived this 30-minute rip training workout. 
Uh, we worked in all different planes of motion. Your core was engaged. We lunged, we squatted, we pushed, we pulled, we rotated, we hinged. Um, I hope you learned a bunch of stuff and uh, you're gonna be more athletic because of it. Thank you so much, everybody. Do me a favor, subscribe to this channel, like this video, come back, try this again. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.